Welcome to our Pearl Harbor Recognition Ceremony. My name is Chris Nardi. I'm speaking today on behalf of Megan Rathbun, our Executive Director, who unfortunately could not make it today. She sends her regrets. Before we begin our program, I'd like to take a moment to honor our veterans, active duty service people, Blue Star and Gold Star families, and our first responders who may be attending today. I also want to recognize members of the board who may be here, and our President Emeritus, Carl Sueco. Also, we'd like to thank Battleship Cove staff and volunteers for their hard work here at Battleship Cove. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do much here in terms of preservation, ceremonies, etc. At this time, I'd like to introduce our distinguished guests who are joining us today for this special and solemn occasion. First and foremost, up front here, we have Freeman Johnson, who is a Pearl Harbor survivor, served on board the light cruiser USS St. Louis, which was moored at um, Southeast Lock at the time of the attack. And that, uh, that particular vessel, it was a light cruiser, got underway, believe it or not, within two hours, and in the meantime, shot down three enemy planes. Um, we'll speak more about Freeman later in the ceremony. Additional guests include from the Naval War College, Colonel Craig Wanson, to my left. We have Father Racine here from the Fall River Fire Department Chaplain's Corps. Also, we have in our audience Somerset Veterans Services Representative uh, Michaela Brito. From the State Department of Veterans Services is Evan. And Evan, I need help pronouncing your last name. Thank you, sir. <laughs> If there's anyone I've forgotten, I apologize. And with that, we're going to move on to our, the rest of our program here. I'd like to introduce, um, first of all, I neglected to, let's have a round of applause for Freeman Johnson here. <laughs> Freeman is now 102 years old. Last year, at age 101, he went to Pearl Harbor to, to participate in that ceremony there. I'd like to now start the, the program with the National Anthem. Father Michael Racine, would you please deliver the invocation? It's always an honor to, to be here. On this 81st anniversary of Pearl Harbor, 
We remember this tragic and sad day in American history, a day that will live in infamy, says President Roosevelt. Heavenly Father, we gather this day as we remember the shock of an infamous, unprovoked attack. But we also remember the courage of this great nation that always stands for its cherished values. On this anniversary of Pearl Harbor Day, we continue to honor the brave Americans who have given their lives and those who stood in our defense. We echo the words of St. John, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. Those victims, those heroes, lived and died, these words. As we look back, we also look forward and ask for your grace and guidance for continued peace in our country and safety for those who continue to serve in our branches of the military. Guide and protect them and bring them home safely as we commend to you, almighty God, those who have lost their lives. In this very beautiful season of hope, joy, peace, and light, we remember the words of the prophet Isaiah. Nation shall not lift, against, shall not lift up sword against nation, neither should they train for war anymore. Guide and direct us in all that we do, and may we bring your honor and glory by bringing joy and peace and goodwill to it all that we meet in our community, our nation, in our world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Our guest speaker is Colonel Wonson. I'm going to read a brief bio before he comes to the podium. Colonel Wonson is a military professor at the Maritime Advanced Warfighting School and senior service representative to the Commandant of the Marine Corps, a career military officer, joint qualified officer, and certified strategic operational planner. He is a combat veteran with nearly 30 years of service, seven overseas deployments, and more than a decade of command experience. He is a graduate, graduate of Marine Corps Command and Staff College and School of Advanced Warfighting and was a Marine Corps Fellow in the Yale University International Security Studies Program. He most recently served as Commanding Officer of Marine Corps De Tactics and Operations Group. Welcome, Colonel Wonson. Distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for affording me the opportunity to be here with you today on this, the 81st anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Today is a very special day for a few reasons. Most importantly, we have an opportunity to remember all those that were present during the attack at Pearl Harbor on December, December 7th, 1941, to include Mr. Freeman Johnson, who was serving aboard the USS St. Louis that morning. Sir, it is truly an honor to be with you here today, and on behalf of everyone at the Naval War College and everyone on active duty today, we thank you and salute you for your service. It's also special because, well, take a look around at where we're at. As a sailor or a Marine, any day that you can spend aboard a U.S. Navy warship is a great day, especially a 35,000 ton battleship with such a distinguished history as the USS Massachusetts. Growing up on the North Shore, my father, a retired Marine, would bring me here to show me the ship when I was a young boy. He served as a 40 millimeter gun mount captain aboard the USS Iowa during the Korean War, and it always meant a lot to him to be back aboard ship and around the type of guns that he knew so much about. When I asked him once if the 16-inch guns hurt his ears when they fired, he said, no, not really, but pointed up to the 5-inch 38s that would fire over his head and said, but those are the reason I can't hear a damn thing your mother says. <laughs> Later on in life, it dawned on me that he often just wanted to use that as an excuse when he didn't want to do something my mother was asking him to do. I think most everyone here today is familiar with the sequence of events 
that took place that Sunday morning. The sudden and deliberate attack, as President Roosevelt described it, caught the United States and its military forces off guard, crippled a sizable portion of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, and thrust the nation into a state of war. Some of the numbers from that day reflect the extent of the devastation. Many of you are already aware of those, but for those that aren't, uh, I'll share a few. Nineteen ships were ultimately damaged or destroyed, to include eight battleships, three cruisers, and three destroyers. Additionally, over 188 aircraft were destroyed and another 159 damaged beyond repair at airfields throughout Oahu. There were close to 3,500 casualties that day, more than 2,400 of those killed in action. This included 2,008 sailors, 208 soldier, 218 soldiers, 109 Marines, and 68 civilians. Nearly half of all of those that were killed were aboard the USS Arizona, 1,102 of them still aboard the ship today in its final resting place. Although December 7, 1941 will forever remain a date which will live in infamy for Americans, the attack also galvanized our nation, bringing Americans together in a way that has happened very few times in our nation's history. The courageous acts of those that bore the brunt of the attack that morning had a long-standing and positive impact on countless Americans both then and now. My father would often describe what life was like in his hometown of Gloucester, Massachusetts in the days and years following the attack. How the community came together in a way that he had never seen. People streaming to the local recruiting stations, some veterans of World War I, too old to serve, but trying to find a way to skirt the regulations, while others from the local high school look for ways to convince recruiters that they were old enough to serve. By the end of the war, 22% of that city's population would serve in uniform, all inspired by the events that took place on 7 December. About 800 miles to the west in a small town in Greenfield, Ohio, my mother would soon receive letters from her uncle, a pharmacist mate aboard the hospital ship USS Solis, moored at Pearl Harbor on December 7th where he described what some, of, uh, some of what had taken place that morning and the selfless actions of so many soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that he witnessed. His stories and the stories of others serving there are what inspired my mother, my, her sister, and many others in the area to go and enlist in the Navy. Some of you may find it surprising that the attack on Pearl Harbor is one of the main reasons that I decided to join the Marine Corps, despite the fact that I was born 26 years after the attack. One of the very first movies that I watched at a young age was Tora Tora Tora, which I'm sure many, if not all of you in this uh, audience have seen probably once or twice in your lifetime. I remember sitting in the living room, probably no older than seven or eight years old at the time, watching the movie with my parents and siblings. I was confused as to why pilots kept trying to take off on an airfield that was being bombed and strafed, and wondered why sailors and Marines continued to man their stations aboard ships that were on fire and sinking. When I asked my father why they didn't run and seek safety, he looked at me and said, they're trying to protect people. That's what they do. I didn't fully understand what he meant at the time, but I soon realized this was my first exposure to the very core values of honor, courage, and commitment that we expect of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines today. The more I studied events that took place on December 7th, the more I began to realize the true meaning of the word selflessness and sacrifice, and the more I learned of the many courageous acts that took place that morning. I learned about Chief Petty Officer John Flynn, who, despite sustaining over 21 separate wounds, continued to fire his machine gun at enemy planes attacking the Naval Air Station at Kaneohe Bay. I learned about Chaplain Lieutenant J.G. Alicia Schmidt, who gave his own life while pushing 12 other men to safety through a porthole on the USS Oklahoma before the ship capsized. I learned about 
Ma uh, Master Technical Sergeant Emil Peters and Private William Turner, Marines stationed at Ava Field who raced through enemy fire to man a machine gun in the back of a damaged dive bomber, firing the gun until Peters was badly injured and Turner mortally wounded. I learned about Army 2nd Lieutenant Phil Rasmussen, a pilot assigned to the 46th Pursuit Squadron at Wheeler Field, who, upon seeing the, the field under attack, raced to his P-36 wearing only his pajamas, managed to get airborne and shot down at least one enemy plane before crash landing with over 500 bullet holes in his, in his aircraft. And I learned about civilian George Walters, a dockyard crane operator that swung a large crane back and forth near the USS Pennsylvania in an attempt to deter low-flying aircraft from attacking a ship at sea as it sat in dry dock. These are just a few examples of the many selfless and heroic acts that took place on the morning of uh, December 7th that inspired so many others, myself included, to serve their country. I could have spent time this morning or this afternoon discussing many of the lessons learned that day that are regularly emphasized at our professional military institutions, such as the need to always remain vigilant and prepared and to never underestimate an adversary or wish away their capabilities. It is especially important today as we find ourselves once again facing threats by potential adversaries in both Europe and in the Asia Pacific region. But that's a discussion for another time. I've always felt that today should focus squarely on remembering those that fought back heroically against incredible odds especially those that made the ultimate sacrifice. They include Captain Mervyn Bennion, Captain of the USS West Virginia, First Sergeant John Devaney, a member of the USS Arizona's Marine Corps Detachment, Lieutenant William Schick, a B-17 crew member with the Army Air Force's 38th Reconnaissance Squadron, and Fall River's own Charles Braga, a yeoman second class serving on the USS Pennsylvania all who gave their lives on that day. In closing, I'd like to share with you one more personal story related to Pearl Harbor. My first duty station as a brand new second lieutenant in 1993 was at Kaneohe Bay, Hawaii. Upon arriving at the island, I donned my service Charlie uniform, traveled to the Arizona Memorial, laid flowers by the names engraved on the memorial wall, and rendered a salute to the 1102 Marines and sailors resting beneath me. Next year, prior to taking this uniform off for the final time, I plan to do the exact same thing. I can think of no better way to start and end a career than to do so in front of the very heroes that inspired me and countless others to follow in their footsteps. May God bless them all, and may their courageous service and self-sacrifice never be forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. At this time, I'd like to ask the Colonel and Freeman to retrieve the wreath from the port side of the battleship and bring it up here to the podium.
Let's, let us have a moment of silence to recognize those who were lost that day. Thank you, Colonel and Freeman. And I'd like to invite Father Racine back up to the podium to deliver the benediction. I say this every year. It's one of the most powerful prayers that we pray for the gift of peace. The prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. That concludes today's ceremony. Thank you all for attending. And please feel free to stay around. The ships are open today. <laughs>